So the name High Lonesome came from this section of the course that is on this really long ridge and it's right kind of in the middle, about mile 65, and it's on the Continental Divide. And when you're up on that ridge, just realize how insignificant you are and how small you are compared to mountains. I was building this race and had no clue what to name it. And I was running up there, kind of hoping I'd get some inspiration. And I looked up and there was this hawk just soaring way up on the horizon. And I grew up loving westerns. I knew the name High Lonesome and it just sort of popped into my head. Now it, I don't know what else we'd ever call it. It's like the perfect name for it. So this fifth year, its first year was 2017. The race is 100 miles. There's five alpine passes and you spend about 75 miles on uh, two really cool trails, the Colorado Trail and the Continental Divide Trail. It's almost a loop, it's not quite, but it's close to it. It's got 23 and a half thousand feet of vertical gain. And we've got 150 runners, 75 ladies and 75 men. I'm Chris McBride. I live in Golden, Colorado. I'm 52. I'm married to Kelly, who will be traveling with us this week. She's my crew chief. Uh, my two boys are going to be pacing with me, Henry and George. Uh, they're uh, one's in middle school, the other's in high school. This will be the first time they've paced, yeah. Um, they've been to all my races. They've been a big, important part of all my races, but uh, they're, they're ready for pacing duties now. My name is Rachel Meyer. I live in Denver. I moved out here from New York and I work in book publishing. No, there really wasn't kind of a particular moment where I was like, I'm ready for 100 miles. If the first 50 miler I ran, there's a 100 miler that runs at the same time. So you see the 100 milers. There was this woman, she was hunched over, looking like she was dying. Like she was using her poles as though they were like the lifeline to her future existence. And I thought, I am never doing this. Like, get me the hell out of here. This is like a hard pass. But I don't know, something terrible happened to my brain and over time, that changed. My name is Dave Mackey, I'm from Boulder, Colorado. My history in running and racing is pretty long overall, probably going back, I mean, 25 plus years. Used to be a you know, pretty competitive runner as far as you know, trying to finish in the podium or win races. Um, and then had an accident in 2015 and that set me back quite a bit. If you start right here, it's 100 exactly. favorite part. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's feeling great. It's like a big group run. <laughs> Chris and I met in Golden um, when I lived there well before the races started. Once the race started to kind of come together, I just asked him if he wanted to be a captain. I was like, hell yeah. So we gave him uh, one of the hardest aid stations. It had uh, it rained for like 34 hours that year and did amazing. And I thought for sure he wasn't going to come back. And a couple months later, he was like, hey, can I do that again? Uh, and so he's captain our Lost Wonder aid station every year until this year. It's fun to get to see him finally have a chance to run the race he helped build. I was out on a trail run uh, on Bear Peak, which is just up above my house in Boulder. 
and I stepped on a big rock and it dislodged and I fell off, literally off of the peak and the rock followed with me. I landed safely. And luckily I survived the fall, but the rock landed on my leg. It was about a 250 pound rock. So, so since I had the accident and then the amputation in 2016, I gradually, over a year after the amputation, kind of figured out how to use a prosthetic socket, which you know is a normal thing people have, but there's also a running blade if you want to run. In 2018, I completed the Leadman series, which is five events, which was my big goal. And then I also did it a couple more times since. The reason I'm here attempting the High Lonesome 100 race is because I was looking for something a little bit harder than Leadville 100, and this race definitely is harder. Um, same distance, but much more vertical, probably more gnarly terrain. Um, so this is a big deal. It's kind of a step up from what I've done with running with a, with a prosthetic blade. Some, because it was like far and away the race that like was appealing and attractive to me. So I entered the lottery for the 2020 race. The 2020 race obviously was canceled. Um, and then my entry was rolled over to 2021. I had kind of a terrible training buildup to 2021. Um, my dad died very unexpectedly in 2020 and that obviously affected everything in my life, including my training. Um, and I just like, I just felt like I was, I was doing a lot of running, but sort of digging myself into a hole. And at a certain point I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like go out, I'm gonna start, I'm going to have at it, but, and we'll see what it is. And we'll see kind of what it turns into. And I timed out between Hancock and Lost Wonderhead. I'm like afraid to say this, but my training has been awesome. Uh, this year has been like the absolute polar opposite of the prior year. Uh, I just like, I've had a great time. I felt great. I felt strong. I have done a bunch of like adventure running and racing and it's just been great. Like I'm having a great time. So fingers crossed. Uh, beautiful. It's nice to get that climb done where it's still cool. All on me, it's in my favorite tree. Well, I'm offering a steady hand. I could be your secure. Everything was moving pretty good. I started to feel some pain though in my, my leg. Um, right inside the socket and that was, I was starting to realize that the reason for that was that I had chosen a liner, the liner that goes around the leg that was too tight and had a little bit too much volume so I could gradually start feeling that and it was starting to wear on me. I had to take off the prosthetic and just sort of, you know, massage my leg. I like have my leg in a vice killing me. Really bad. Everything else is good, or good enough. It's suffering like everybody else. That's just what we're here for, I guess. <laughs> it was extremely painful. I was trying to gauge whether I could tolerate that until I could get to mile 50, which is where the new liner was that I'd need, but I thought it could, you know, at least get there. And that's not always a bad scenario. Early in a race to have, you know, problems. You know, people have problems with their stomachs, you know, their energy, whatever, they throw up early in the race and they that slows down their pace actually and that can pay off later in the race. So I wasn't too concerned, you know, the pain I could tolerate.
Yeah, feeling good, yeah. I, uh, you know, this higher stuff is kind of tough on the stomach, but otherwise the body's doing okay. Come into Cottonwood, great energy, a lot of friendly, familiar faces. Um, it was great to see him. I didn't have any crew there, but I felt really taken care of by the, by the aid station. I didn't have any crew at Cottonwood because my family was busy setting up Lost Wonderhut. Uh, the plan would be to meet my crew for the first time at mile 55 at Lost Wonderhut. Uh, you know, it's never easy going up those big climbs and so you just kind of think that's how the entire race will go so it was tough coming up Laws Pass but then I crested it yeah I'm recharged I feel good good work man good work good work nice job man Didn't get stuck in the place I was from Creature habit, I suppose Wear these fears like clothes But a mile or so deep on my fire So I got up over Lost Pass and um, pretty much knew then that I, even if I changed the line out that it wasn't going to make a big difference. I'm a stubborn as an ox but we share a heart Voice rings like a bell, though a life apart. No words on a page gonna tell me where I'm from. All right! Woo! All right, Dave! Woo! 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 bag or anything? No, I'm going to drop here. You're going to drop here? Yeah. Yeah, bomb. Bag. Are you sure? Okay. We'll go get Walking it. around even after okay. 20 minutes after dropping out, I'm, I think I made the right decision. Yeah, things are pretty painful. You know, it's not the end of the world, but it's, I had an expectation set high and it's, it's always disappointing. You know, I feel like it was the right choice though. So it's like I'm pretty good about moving on from hard situations and I've had plenty of them. <laughs> But a mile or so deep, I'm my father's son. I got his eyes in a civil tongue. I won't take directions for the way I get my calls from. I'm as stubborn as a knox, but we share a heart. Voice rings like a bell. <laughs> Thank you. Number nine. Number nine. Yeah, nice. If you miss me. All right. She's doing good. 
Yeah, thanks, sir. Right, Go well, luck, thanks, buddy. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Good job, man. Yeah. Thank thank you. Number nine. Number nine out. out. that out and back section of because I really like to cheer on other runners and just sort of see how people are doing. And you also like, especially if you're slow, you know that eventually you're gonna see some of your friends coming down. So it's nice to like see just humans and it's nice to see people you actually know and give a shit about. Um, so that was fun. Uh, my mom leads with worry and then everything else follows. She wanted to know how I was doing and how I was feeling and how things were going. And then she looked at her watch and she looked at my pace card and she said, well then you, why were you late? And I was like, ma, it's hard, like it's a pain in the ass. Weather was fine and I was late because yeah, I'm slow as shit. And I was also far ahead of my splits from the prior year. So I felt good about the fact that like I had a lot more time against my splits from the other year and I was or from the prior year and I was way ahead of cutoff. So I was like, okay, this is it. I'm putting the effort in and like the output will be what the output is and let's just see. I'm looking forward to a pacer. I get my sister, pick her up at Hancock. It'll be a party. Rach had a rough go last year. She pushed hard, but she dropped at Lost Wonder. Uh, you know, so for this year, I just, she's been working so hard. I just hope that she, she gets that finish that she wants. Most people who DNF uh, come back with a serious fire in them. You know, her especially, she's done a fantastic job training and putting herself out there. She has spent a lot of time up here getting ready. It's kind of fun to see the DNFers come back. We root for every one of our runners, no matter where they finish. Welcome back. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. This is what you came for. Bye. Love you. Love you. All right, 136 out. Thank you. Bye, people. Well, I've been chasing the sun since I was 10 years old. Felt the heat rise on my skin. We are at uh, mile 55 of the High uh, Lonesome 100 at the Lost Wonder Hut. Team McBride has been uh, representing this aid station since uh, 2017. Just love it. Every year I think we become more and more attached to it. So what's different this year with him running is that we didn't see him for 55 miles. That's why it's so extra exciting when we, when we did see him a little bit of uh, like a surprise birthday party. <laughs> hey, the last time I checked he was in 10th and then, you know, he's in 5th, so. What's up, Dad? You're killing it. Yeah, Good place. Can I get you anything? Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, fill up the pouch. Yeah, got you. I need my, um, okay. uh, my, my cup. Okay. I need some water. I'll see you in a... Uh, next one. I mean, he's really surprised us. He's doing a lot faster than I thought, so it's going to be exciting to see how he places.
It was dark long before I got to Tin Cup the prior year, so I knew that I was doing much better in terms of kind of overall progression through the course. Woo! I feel great. It's awesome out here. Nighttime. Gonna be less, less hot. Leaving Tin Cup. I made a friend. Coming off the ridge and into Monarch, um, I was able to confirm that I was in uh, third place male, fourth place overall, which was pretty exciting. We tried to piece together the, our position by things we heard at aid stations or runners along the way, but we weren't quite sure. So uh, when we confirmed we were in uh, third place male and that the second place runner wasn't too far ahead of us, we were pretty excited and ready to charge out of there. So Hancock is at mile 49. Um, when you leave Hancock, you can take a pacer with you. Um, so I'd seen my crew and then picked up my sister who was gonna pace me for the overnight section from um, mile 50 to I think mile 68, which is Monarch. Uh, and then my sister is my favorite person on the planet. Uh, so it was great to see her and great to know that I was gonna sort of be spending this challenging stretch, both because of the darkness and because of the terrain, with somebody that I was just gonna have a great time with. Um, do you wanna put on pants before you change shoes? I think I'm gonna eat something, then I will do a costume. Thank you. Sad about the Doritos. Rachel, have fun. Thank you guys so much. Have a great see night. See you at the next place, apparently. Then we get into blanks. I pick up my son George, a 13 year old kid. And uh, he was really worried about me. He was worried that it was gonna be 84 miles into the race. And he was really set up to just limp his dad home. But I was feeling good and told him and he, it was really fun running with him. Yep, nice job. Love you okay. guys. Thank you. Up this way. Coming out trail. After I left Blanks with George, we were climbing uh, a steep little section really hard, and I saw um, Luke's headlamp. We got to the top, got past him, running some of the fastest, just awesome single track. Groovy coming into Raspberry is just a, a pleasure. And as hard as we were running, every once in a while I'd see a little headlamp behind me, and Luke just ran us down. And I was like, "Buddy, I'm, I'm redlining. I'm. This is all I got. If this ain't fast enough, I can't do anything." So we stepped to the side. Luke flew by us. Of course, said you know really nice things, encouraging things, and just hammered it. And then we never saw him. Saw him after that, but it was fun. Yeah. All right, seven miles to go, leaving out. How are you feeling? This is a bitch of a climb. Yeah, is this the hard one? Um, yeah, we got another. It kind of rolled. It was hard. A lot harder than I expected. He was uh, pushing me, which uh, 
it was not not expected, but you know, eh, it was a lot of fun and uh, yeah. Are you headed? Uh, we're headed to the finish. Hopefully we can catch him. He's probably gonna be really pushing with my brother. To I think it's nine miles between Lost Wonderhut and Purgatory. And it is just, it's a long nine miles. I don't know how else to describe it. It just felt like I was out there for a long time. And I felt like, like I could tell I wasn't moving all that well. It didn't feel bad, it just felt slow. But I knew that I was losing a lot of time there. And that made me nervous. I think I wanted to be in Monarch like early in the morning, like 7, 6, 30, 7 a.m. was what I had been hoping for. And it became abundantly clear earlier on that that was not in the cards. Uh, so we climbed up the headwall onto the ridge, really just as the sun was rising. And it was, I have to say, stunning. I mean, like truly the most beautiful sunrise I've ever seen in my life. And to like be there with this person who means the world to me was like wonderful to be able to share that with her. But I was also like, ah, shit. Like I'm not supposed to be here at this point during the day. Once Luke threw down the hammer, I was still motivated. You know, I told my son that the faster we go, the better it is. So let's, um, let's keep pushing. And I, I kind of took it easy up the last square hill. Got there, I was just so tired. I was like, buddy, I just, I think we just gotta, we just gotta hike this in, let's get this finish over. <laughs> and so, yeah, I told him we gotta look good. We gotta, we gotta run. Uh, we gotta get George with us. And they're, you know, they, Henry especially feels a little self-conscious of like, you know, I didn't, what did I do? But he doesn't realize how important. Kids don't realize how much they enjoy. I just like being with him and sharing these things. And so it was good to have uh, my two boys finish with me. Yeah. Yes, I'll be back to be the aid station captain at Lost Wonder Hut. I love this race and love being a part of it. My family really enjoys it. And I really believe what I tell each volunteer every year, that there's something incredibly special about helping someone accomplish a big goal, like running 100 miles in the mountains. Coming off the ridge from Purgatory, the sun had come up, it had gotten warm again. I knew I was much later than I wanted to be. Uh, and I think my sister and I had been talking just a little bit about like, you, you know, she was sort of trying to remind me that I still had time and that I was ahead of cutoff and that like it was still possible. So to sort of like, you know, help keep my spirits up that like it could still be done. We're here. We'll get her through. Hi. I'm fine. I'm great. And then Monarch is just like bumping. Like it's this huge aid station right on the road. People are coming and going. Um, so it feels almost like a totally different scene. The plan. Keep moving, have some fun. I left with my pacer, who was also a totally different scene. Um, my friend Bethany, who is very much a cheerleader personality. Um, so as soon as we left, I, I think I said to her, I may not make the cutoff at Foose's. And she was great about it. She was like, gotcha, cool, no problem. And we're gonna get to Foose's, so let's rumble. Against Rachel's wishes, I have the camera out. We're feeling good. We're going downhill. She feels super great on my quads because I just started, but 
Apparently her quad, not so much. But she's there, she's moving, we're grooving, we feel good. Look how beautiful this is. Just, wow. What? Woohoo! A station one mile! We're doing it! We're, we're doing it. Should we check the time? We're checking time. I'll do it. 1021. A station one mile! It's 1021. Oh, nice. Yo! Cruising. It's sort of like the perfect amount of time, right? Because you're like, this is gonna be tough and I'm gonna have to work for this, but it's possible. There's en like enough of a sense of optimism that like you can pull it off. Um, just mentally makes a huge difference because you're here to pull it off. I'm so happy to do this Got it. Awesome work. Two of me, two of me. happened here. We know that she didn't have much time. The goal was get her in, get her out. Nutrition, hydration, make sure everything was okay, and run. And she, she been up 20 minutes before cutoff, so. But a, an enormous amount of hope that she's going to finish this. Um, she's worked really hard. It matters to her. She wants to do it. Everybody wants to see her succeed. As a mom, all I care about is that she is healthy at the end of this, however it ends. That's all that matters to me. Because I know if she doesn't finish this year, she'll be back next year. <laughs> so I really want her to finish this year, so hopefully we're done. <laughs> so I left with a pile of things and a new pacer, um, my friend Chuck, um, who is awesome. One mile out, Rachel's going to come in in about 10, 15 minutes. Quick turn around and get her out before the cutoff. Coming into Raspberry, I was like, right, this like I have to get in and out of Raspberry. Like that is the thing. Like in a lot of ways, like that's the finish line for me. Because if I don't make that cutoff, like that's it. Nothing else matters. Coming into Raspberry, I was like, this is the well. Like you're in it and you're gonna stay in it and you're gonna get to Raspberry. Like this is how we're gonna this is how we're gonna roll. So I was just very, very focused. As long as I don't get hit by a car between here and the finish line, I will finish this race. And then when I left Raspberry, you know, it was kind of similar. My sister picked me up again. Um, so she was jumping back in and she was like, all right, like we can do this, but you're gonna have to push. So I left Raspberry and I was like, okay, one of two things can happen. One is I'll be so bad at math at this point and I'm not very good at it to begin with that there's no chance, I won't understand that I'm gonna miss the cutoff. Or my math skills will be enough intact that I will in fact know very quickly 
that there's no way I'm gonna make this cut off. And I was like, no, yeah, I still have some math game in me. So I very quickly realized I'm like, no way. I also kind of knew coming into Raspberry, I was like, in and out of Raspberry, like that's possible. You, like do that, like that's what you have to do. And if you can't make up enough time in that section to buy yourself more than 12 minute miles for the final segment, like who cares? Uh, and maybe many people care. For me, I wanted to cover the course, period. I wanted to run the whole course. I wanted to run all the miles. Uh, what meant something to me was doing this thing with the people that I care about so much. So coming up the road, I had all these, you know, friends, but it was quiet. Like, you know, there were cars passing, but it was just kind of us. And you're on that segment for long enough, and my friends had picked me up early enough in that segment that like we all chatted for a while but like at a certain point we were it had just gotten quieter and we were just kind of you know like grinding up that hill and you start heading down the field and all of a sudden you sort of see everybody and my family uh, so my mom my nieces my brother-in-law um, our friends they basically like everybody who was a part of my crew who wasn't pacing we're all there. I, I have me and Blake, my nieces are five and eight, and they were there and I was sort of, you know, I said hello to them and I was holding their hands and we were all running together. And I didn't really notice anybody else. Also, I think there's like a tree or a bush or something you kind of come around. And I came around with them and I looked up and I was like, holy shit, like the entire, like it, what, to me, like it felt like the whole race scene was like at the finish line just like cheering and hollering. And that I was like, whoa. <laughs> that was like quite overwhelming in a, a wonderful way, but I, like it took me a minute to register it. And it was like kind of stunning. And just like, yeah, it's just almost hard to take in and very amazing.